today we are going to talk about understanding and attacking delegations in active directory so let's get started then so why is this session important kerberos delegation is a very common and needed aspect in active directory environment when you go for a pen test or an adversary simulation uh, you would be commonly facing the kerberos delegation here so abuse case of this functionality uh, takes advantage of the inherent process or the protocol flow rather than exploiting a vulnerability present in a software version so ideally the systems or the environment that uses delegation would be vulnerable for uh, the abuse cases and uh, this session would also help you to escalate your privileges uh, to a domain admin and uh, you would also get insights on lateral movement phases once you have an initial control over the network or a system so uh this is who am i slide uh my name is venkat raman kumar goes by the handle red wolf i'm working as a security analyst at uh, vault infosec i hold a couple of certifications like crtp couple of other certifications from hack the box etc uh i am currently the chapter lead at oasp chennai i am also the technical member of uh, tamil nadu cyber security council it's a group where uh, we infosec professionals share our knowledge from various aspects of uh, cyber security domain i also love solving red team labs and environments i am currently researching on active directory attacks and adversary simulation and edr bypass stuff more of a red teaming stuff i would also love to collaborate on doing labs currently i am doing apt labs from my the box if you want to collaborate uh, do reach out to me over twitter or instagram check out my blogs at uh, redulsec i am and uh, my git book too hope you find it useful there so the agenda today uh, i will be walking you through the basics of kerberos authentication technical jargons like kdc tgt service tickets would be explained along with the protocol flow we would also understand why and how kerberos delegation was introduced the types of delegation along with the abuse case scenarios would be explained in detail i have also attached a demo of the abuse cases i have pre recorded it so that uh, while presenting i don't have any glitches so this is just a quick disclaimer here all the demos and the explanation uh, would give you basic insight about the attacks and the uh, authentication flow here if you want to understand better research more i have attached a couple of reference links at each of each uh, section hope you find it useful and uh, another major disclaimer is that better to watch these demos over a big screen uh, i highly recommend not watching over mobile devices since i would be using lot of commands and you won't understand that if you are watching in a small screen so what is kerberos authentication basically uh, kerberos is a authentication protocol uh, uh, which is pretty complex than native ntlm so kerberos provides a centralized environment uh, that functions to authenticate the users to the servers and the vice versa the key components uh, that you must understand before going into the kerberos flow are kdc tgt and uh, the service ticket so let's get to it then so kdc stands for key distribution center this provides service tickets and tgt to the client upon verification of their request KDC in turn has two parts one is authentication server which performs the initial or the pre authentication phase and issues the tgt to the client and the ticket granting service would send the client service ticket upon verification of the submitted tgt so what is tgt here after the pre authentication phase is completed KDC provides a credential material or the ticket that is encrypted using the KRB TGT accounts password 
or the its NTLMH. So the KRB TGT account is natively the K called as Kerberos account, which is uh, present in the domain controller. So, and one important aspect about TGT is that TGT is gets cached in the client's machine so that when a client tries to access any other resource, the pre-authentication would not be repeated again. Rather, this TGT would be used to invoke the service ticket request. Again, when we are talking about service ticket, service ticket is issued to the client once the TGT uh, is verified by the ticket granting service and one part of this service ticket is encrypted using the service account NTLMH. Let's talk about the flow here. As I said earlier, this is the pre-authentication phase. Here client tries to access SQL Server. So the client submits a request asking TGT to the KDC here. Once the KDC, which is present in the domain controller, verifies the request, it issues the TGT and a session key. Here, the session key is encrypted using the client's NTLMH, and this is known as AS rep response. Once the, <coughs> once the client re uh, receives the TGT, it makes a service ticket request to access SQL Server, which is sent to the KDC. The KDC verifies the submitted TGT. Once the verification is completed, uh, it sends the service ticket and a new session key. And one part of this service ticket is encrypted using the service accounts in the LMS. With this service ticket, it authenticates to the SQL server and the SQL server, which has that service ticket now, decrypts it and verifies the client uh, really has access over the SQL server or not. This verification is completely based on a uh, something called as PAC, which actually describes more about the client. Uh, what is the SID of uh, the client? What are the access privileges uh, in the domain? More of that stuff. <coughs> Sorry. These are a couple of references that I have under, uh, attached to understand Kerberos better. Hope you check that out. Uh, let's now get into why Kerberos delegation was introduced. Imagine a situation where a user, John, tries to access a web server which is uh, present in the domain. So the access is done by Kerberos and the access is successful here. Now, some part of the application needs to access files related to John, which is present in the file server here. Now, the access is denied for the web server since the web server does not have any credential material so uh, related to John, so it can impersonate the user John to the file server here. So, how this so-called credential material be provided to the web server so that it can impersonate the user John and access the files present in the file server. So that's why Kerberos delegation was introduced. This is the flow uh, where uh, Kerberos delegation is configured on a web server. I wouldn't be talking about which type of delegation is configured here that I would be saving it for later part of the session. So the, now as far as now it's concerned, the user John tries to access a web server that has one type of delegation configured and the web server now has some sort of credential material, let's just say it's, it may be a John's TGT or service ticket, anything. It has uh, some part of credential material so that it can impersonate user John so it makes a request to access the files present in the file server on behalf of John and the authentication is successful here. The files related to John are retrieved by the web server and hence the flow is successful. So these are the three types of delegation uh, which we would be seeing it in the today's session. So.
unconstrained delegation, constrained delegation, and resource-based constrained delegation. So, what is unconstrained delegation? Basically, when unconstrained is unconstrained delegation is configured over a particular server, this has uh, simply uh, put it in a layman way. It has unlimited privileges uh, to access any services present in the domain, impersonating a user who accesses that server. When a user accesses a server with un uh, that has unconstrained delegation configured, the user sends their TGT to the service, uh, server itself. So if you could uh, recollect the Kerberos flow here, the service ticket request is made by the TGT alone. So there is no place of any other uh, credential material like password comes into place. Simply put, the TGT of the user is used to invoke a service ticket to the KDC. So here, the user sends their TGT itself to the web server so that the impersonation of the user by the web server gets perfectly fine. Uh, I mean, gets perfectly done. So, yeah. So imagine a situation where you have access over a server that has unconstrained delegation configured. So if a user who is part of a sensitive uh, group like domain admin or enterprise admin accesses that service, then you would be able to capture their TGT and replay it to gain privileges of that particular user. So this type of unconstrained delegation can be configured over a machine account or a user account that doesn't really matter. And the abuse case would remain same for both. So this is just a pictorial representation of what I have explained to you earlier. Here the user tries to access a web server that has unconstrained delegation configured. Now the web server can impersonate this user uh, in order to access any services present in the domain. Let that be a file server or a mail server or uh, a directory uh, server. So this is the uh, domain controller configuration or the configuration perspective of this unconstrained delegation. Here domain admin has to explicitly configure this trust this computer for delegation to any service. This must be the checkbox <coughs> that must be done by the domain admin. Here, I have configured it for the SQL server. So, um, so as I said earlier, uh, the unconstrained delegation uh, can be configured over a mission account, over a mission account or a user account here. So that doesn't make a big difference here. The, let's talk about the flow analysis. I have analyzed the un, uh, delegation flows using Wireshark and I have formed a protocol flow here in order to explain it to you in a clear way. So let's take, uh, talk about it. First request is that uh, client makes a request in order to access Web SVC, it's a service uh, to the KDC. The KDC verifies this request and issues uh, a TGT ticket here. Once the client receives this TGT ticket, it sends back to the KDC again and makes a request for service mm -hmm. ticket. The TGT is verified by the KDC and the service ticket is returned to the client here. As the web service account has unconstrained delegation configured, the KDC expects another TGT request from the client. As expected, the client sends out another TGT request. Now this TGT is more in a specialized way. This TGT can be forwarded to web service so that unconstrained delegation flow gets executed. Once the TGT request is verified, the KDC returns a TGT 
with the forwardable flag set so once the client retrieves the tgt with the forwardable flag set it sends the service ticket for accessing web base vc along with the forwardable tgt here the web server uh, returns the required content to the client and some part of the application needs to access the sql server on behalf of the client so since the web server has the forwardable tgt here what it does is it makes a service ticket request to kdc using this forwardable tgt impersonating the client here so the kdc uh, would verify the forwardable uh, tgt ticket and sends the service ticket to web service in order to access the sql server now uh, once the service ticket for accessing sql server is retrieved by the web server it accesses the sql server and the sql server returns the required content here so that's that is the basic flow of how an unconstrained delegation would work so let's now talk about the abuse case scenario here uh there are three important or two important consideration that need to be done before talking about the abuse case scenarios here one is that uh you need to have it is better to have administrator privileges over a computer account for each type of delegations configured uh in order to abuse them abuse them and another thing is that uh you must have bypassed the windows defender or any antivirus solution so that it can uh work perfectly without any hurdle so here i have imported power view script into the memory so let's talk about the command get domain computer unconstrained would list the domain uh, machine accounts that has unconstrained delegation configured access the server that has unconstrained delegation con configured monitor the kerberos tickets that are getting cached in the server and wait for any kind of domain admin or a sensitive user to access that service and this can be used by uh, done by using rubus or mimikatz here once the tgt gets captured import it using rubus or mimikatz into the memory uh, or in more specific into the last process so this is the recorded video uh, so now i am starting rubus in the monitoring mode with an interval of 3 seconds i am giving this uh, flag called no wrap so that i don't want any spaces in between the captured tgt if you give uh, without this flag you would have some spaces in between the ticket it won't be a whole string uh, to put it in a simple words so i don't have any uh, sensitive uh, user whose tgt is captured here and this is the domain controller where a domain admin tries to access a web server that is hosted in this computer and in order to access the web server or the website domain authentication is required so let's see and uh, the domain admin deadpool would log in into this computer i uh, would log in using the domain controller in order to access my web server yeah so the access get successful and you could see that deadpool's tgt is captured in my screen so using this tgt uh, i would be able to uh, get the privileges of domain admin here <coughs> so before importing the tgt into my memory i am just seeing whether i am able to access the files present in 
the domain controller as far as now i get an permission denied error here so now i am importing the ticket into the last process and the ticket is imported i am able to access it successfully even i can take a ps remoting to uh, Yep. So this is the abuse of unconstrained delegation here. Uh, these are the references. Hope uh, you check that out. Let's now talk about constrained delegation here. So while comparing unconstrained delegation, it had access to any services present in the domain, and it can uh, impersonate the users there. While considering constrained delegation. the access is limited and it are specified by the domain admin when a user accesses a server that has constrained delegation configured the server can impersonate the user to access specific services alone so mark this word specific services alone and these services are explicitly mentioned in the object called msds allowed to delegate to attribute uh, which would give the list of services uh, that can be used for delegating there are two major extension when uh, you need to consider when you are talking about constraint delegation one is kerberos protocol transition extension and another one is constraint delegation extension which is more oftenly called as s for you to self and s for you to proxy here So let's now see uh, what is S for you to self and S for you to proxy here. Before that, I need to show my uh, configuration that I have done and uh, I have used it in my demo video. So this is the web service account, and I have configured here the constraint delegation, and I have used use any authentication protocol, which means that S for you to self and S for you to proxy would be invoked. So let's now start. What is S for you to self and S for you to proxy here? S for you to self basically allows a service to request a service ticket for itself impersonating a user. So, uh. this service ticket would have a special flag set which is forwardable flag set and this is called forwardable service ticket so cases where this comes into play is that when a user accesses a server or a service that has uh, all type of uh, i mean to say uh, which you authenticates uh, when a user authenticates to a server or a service using non kerberos authentication protocol like uh, that may be uh, ntlm or cred ssp then in order to invoke s for you to proxy this needs to have a service ticket with forwardable flag set this would be only retrieved from s for you to self there are two major misconceptions here one is that s for you to self can be invoked by any service accounts that is present in the domain the catch here is that the forwardable service ticket would be retrieved only by the service accounts that has trusted to auth for delegation here so uh, if any other service account that is invoking s for you to self and that doesn't have trusted to auth for delegation would end up retrieving a service ticket that does not have this forwardable flag set so only if you have a service ticket which has the forwardable flag set you will be able to invoke s for you to proxy here so what is s for you to proxy s for you to proxy basically allows a service to request a service ticket for the spns or the services specified in msds allowed to delegate to on behalf of a particular user or impersonating a user 
the service ticket that is required to access uh, or uh, required to make a service ticket request is that so this ticket forwardable service ticket is required for making this request so that's it this is the flow here here a user tries to access a web server which has constraint delegation configured and it is explicitly specified by the domain admin that this can delegate only to sif service present in the file server it cannot delegate to any other services present in the domain so this is the configuration that is explicitly done by the domain admin here so again this is in represent uh, this is just in screen talk uh, to show you you can have constraint delegation configured over a user account or a machine account that doesn't make a big difference in the abuse case scenario so this is just in flow analysis of uh, the protocol transition i mean to say there are two processes getting involved one is s for you to self and s for you to proxy here so this is that thing here uh, the client authenticates to the web service initially using the ntlm authentication and later part uh, the web service needs to impersonate the client and access the sql server here uh the web server now makes a service ticket request to the kdc uh that need to have the forwardable flag set upon verification the kdc returns the service ticket and this service ticket is again used to do make a service ticket request for accessing sql server previously the service ticket request for is uh, was for the web service itself now it is for sql server so that is s for you to self and s for you to proxy here so and the kdc notices that uh, the web service has a configuration uh, msd is allowed to delegate to pointing to the sql server so this verifies the request and uh, sends the service ticket to access sql server the web server impersonating the client accesses the sql server and the required content is sent to the web server again so let's now talk about the abuse case scenario again i would be using domain um, i mean power view script for this purpose uh get domain user trusted to auth or get domain computer trusted to auth would list the user uh, service accounts that has constraint delegation configured we must either have access over any one of these accounts the access might be through a password or a uh, shell directly you can use you uh, rubus for this entire process and you can also use another tool called kiko here both would be useful at the end so let's now start with the demo here i would be exp uh, i would be explaining you two scenarios where i have the ntlm hash of the web service account in another scenario i mean the next thing i would be having the control of web service account i don't uh, i am considering that i didn't knew the ntlm during first exam uh, example i would be using kiko next one i would be using rubus so let's get started this is just uh, the domain controller page where you could see that delegation is configured and web service has uh, constraint delegation configured pointing to the sif service of uh, the domain controller here so here uh, get domain user trusted to auth i would be able to list the user accounts that has constraint delegation configured here you could see that msds allowed to delegate to 
points to the shift service of the domain control area. Red Bull DC is the domain controller in my domain, which is Red Bull dot local. So now I'm using Kiko here. Okay. So here, what I'm initially doing is that I am retrieving the TGT uh, ticket for the web service account here, specifying the NTLM hash. So hey, sir. Yeah. Sorry about that. Your, your screen stopped sharing, I believe. We can't oh, see what you're seeing right currently. Okay, okay. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is it uh, before or it is uh, just now starting? I mean, my screen uh, is it was, about to start. It was probably just about uh, two minutes ago, right, when you started talking about this new, uh, this new breakout. Okay. Okay. So let me explain it from the starting. I uh, hope that would be fine. Thank you, sir. So as I explained earlier, this is the domain controller page where I have configured constraint delegation on web service account. Here you could see that uh, constraint delegation is configured over the SIF service of the domain controller. Domain controller is Redwolf DC and redwolf.local is my domain. So, Yep, here you could see that I have imported, I have bypassed the AMSI and power view. I didn't have any other antivirus solution installed in my uh, virtual environment here. So now what I'm doing is that uh, I'm listing the user account that has trusted to, I mean, that has constraint delegation configured. So here you could see that MSD is allowed to delegate to option is set to the SIF service of the domain controller. I am now using Kiko to perform the abuse scenario. Here, what I'm doing is that uh, I'm retrieving the TGT account of the uh, web service account here using specifying the NTLM hash. This is the NTLM hash. This is the domain and this is the account here. I have retrieved the TGT of web service using this command. Okay, so let me just explain it. Here, now what I'm doing is that I am trying to invoke S4U to self and S4U to proxy using Kiko here. I am uh, mentioning the TGT ticket of the web service account that was retrieved earlier. I am mentioning that. And this user flag is set to the impersonating user. Now I am impersonating the user Deadpool, who is the domain admin, of course. And the iPhone service flag is set to the uh, service that is pointed in uh, MSDS allowed to delegate to option. And uh, I, I'm uh, this in between pipe symbol specifies that I am invoking another service ticket which is for LDAP in the same machine account. I am doing this in order to perform the DC sync attack that would end up retrieving the domain admin's credential or uh, KRBTGT account's password. So, successfully, I have retrieved the TGS ticket here for the LDAP service. Now I am importing that ticket into my memory using Mimikatz. So this was successful. Let me just list the active Kerberos tickets here. You can see that uh, LDAP service ticket has been here. Now I am performing the DC sync attack using Mimikatz again. So I am able to retrieve the KRBTGT account's password. So that's it. We'll now talk about a scenario where I didn't have 
the web service accounts ntlm rash rather than i have an access over a machine that has uh, with the privileges of web service account so again i am listing the user that has manstrain delegation configured let me skip it so now i am using grubus to get the dgt ticket of the user web svc this is the command used for that purpose i have captured the dgt here so now i would be replaying that dgt in order to uh, gain the privileges of the domain admin here so again as for you to self is used for invoking it Okay, so let me explain this command. So Rubus as for you to self, I mean I'm using Rubus here, and I'm uh, mentioning the service account and the T captured the TGT. Uh, along with it, I'm also mentioning the domain. I'm mentioning the impersonating user that uh, I want to impersonate, which is Deadpool and MSDS SPM is a flag. where i would be mentioning the service that was listed earlier so this is the service and alternate service is ldap here too i would be performing the dc sync attack that's why i am importing that one here so i am now importing the ticket directly into memory using ptt so the ticket is successfully imported now let me try to yeah again i have the active care bros ticket for accessing the ldap service of redul dc here now again i would perform the dc sync attack yeah so that's it so these are couple of references that i highly recommend you to watch or give it a read after the session gets over and if you guys have any doubt about any type of delegations or any aspect of active directory kindly reach out to me over discord i would be happy to explain it to you next let's now talk about resource based constraint delegation this resource based constraint delegation is quite different from classic constraint delegation while considering classic constraint delegation the delegation configuration was done on the system or the server which can delegate to any other services present in the domain right while considering resource based constraint delegation the configuration is done on the service that receives the delegated credential the key difference would be is that uh let me explain it to you with the example that we are walking through all this uh, time so in previous uh, previous case we had the constraint delegation configured on the web service account whereas while considering resource based constraint delegation we would have the delegation configuration done over the sql server which receives the delegated credential from the web service account so this uh, configuration is also must be explicitly done uh, not by the domain admin it need not be in domain admin so this is the con uh, uh, configuration that needs to be done here msds allowed to act on behalf of other identify identity the common abuse case of this resource based constraint delegation would be when uh when a user or when you have an write permissions over a machine account these are the permission generic call generic write write tackle or write property you would be able to set this object which is msds allowed to on act on behalf of other identity and this does not require administrative privileges you would just simply need the write permissions over the machine account 
then you would be able to configure rbcd which is resource based constraint delegation and abuse it so this is just the pictorial representation if you could recollect uh, while considering the classic constraint delegation the configuration was done here why whereas in rbcd you have the configuration done on the file server so here the user accesses the uh, web server and since the web server is allowed to delegate and it is explicitly specified in the file server it can access uh, the file server impersonating the user so this is basic difference between the classic constraint delegation and uh, resource based constraint delegation in const uh, classic constraint delegation the delegation property is set on the service a pointing to service b whereas in resource based constraint delegation the delegation property is set on service b which is pointing to the service a so this is the last session so uh, last section of this topic well done guys i have said lot more of delegations here so this is an uh, configuration page where i have generic write permissions over the domain controller with the user privileges web service so this is the flow analysis this flow remains the same here i mean uh, this part doesn't have a big difference let me skip it uh, as because i don't have much of a time now uh, let's talk about phi from phi the client after getting the service ticket for web svc makes a service request using the service ticket and the service verifies it and returns the ticket i i mean returns the required content here the web service makes a service ticket request for accessing sql server impersonating the user here the kdc notices that sql server has a delegation configuration pointing to the web server so that sql server can accept delegated service uh, credentials from the web service hello here the kdc verifies this and sends the service ticket in order to access the sql server using this sql service ticket or the service ticket for sql servers the web server accesses uh the sql server and uh, the sql server returns the required content so let's talk about the abuse case here here uh, what we would be doing is that uh, there are two major things that you need to consider before this one is that you need to have control over a user account that has generic right permissions over the target computer you are willing to take over another one is that you need to have uh, access over account that has s for you to self enabled here of course there is another way to abuse it but uh, i won't be talking about that here and uh, once that is done uh, you have two configuration now you need to uh, store the target computer in a variable i am storing it here and now what we would be doing is that we would find targets that has s for you to self enabled and this must have trusted to auth for delegation flag set and once that is done we would be uh, storing the attacker said i mean uh, the security identifier of the account that has generic write permissions over the target in this variable which is attacker said then we would be verifying the permission here so what i have done here is that i have listed the uh, object acls for the target computer and i have matched that with my security identifier of the web svc here so once that is done we would be storing another variable here which is uh, the account that has s for you to self enabled 
in the demo or in my scenario both accounts are same which is uh, the permission uh, or the account that has generic write permission over the target computer is same as the account that has s for you to self enabled here so i am storing again the web service account into a variable now i am uh, allocating a security identifier to the service account here and later part what i am doing here is that i am substituting the security identifier or the sid into the raw sddl format which stands for security descriptor definition language so why this process is happening is that we can set object only if these things are converted here so once the sec, uh, it is converted we would have it stored in a variable and we would convert that into binary format and later part we would be setting the object msds allowed to act on behalf of other identity here using sd bytes here which is in turn points to this uh, i mean uh, web server here so once that is done we would access we would be able to retrieve uh, the service tickets using the web service account here so let me just pop out the domain uh, video here so you could see that i have generic right permissions over it so let me quickly okay so here i am as i said earlier i am storing the target account in a variable i am also listing the user accounts that has constraint delegation configured uh, and it has trusted to auth for delegation property set i am now getting the security identifier of the account that has generic write permissions over the target computer i am checking my access through this command you could see that i have generic write permissions so okay so what i am doing here is that i am uh, storing the uh, account that has s for you to self enabled in a variable i am converting that into a security identifier here and in turn i am turning that into a raw sdl format i am in turn converting that into binary uh, format and then i am setting that to the domain object here msds allowed to act on behalf of other identity and the permission is set i mean the object gets updated here so now i am able to use rubus and impersonate yep now i am able to use rubus here and uh, invoke the service tickets using uh, the credentials or the ntlm as a web service here i am in trying to impersonate the user deadpool here and this in the flag of msds spn any type of service can be specified simply i have specified zip service here you can specify ldap2 since there is no uh, configuration like while you consider constraint delegation there so alternate service tickets i am requesting for ldap http winrm sifs again all the tickets are imported successfully here again i am using mimic cats so let me try to list the active kerberos tickets here you could see that there are these uh, the tickets that i have specified in alt service flag ldap http winrm sifs ws man and uh, one more thing is that these are the native services which do not required to be configured explicitly on a machine account so here we are talking about the machine account red bull dc right these are the services which are natively present in it so yeah 
तो लेट मी परफॉर्म द डी जी सिंह कटा के और Yep. Now I'm able to retrain the KRBT GT accounts password. So that's it, guys. Here are the references, and uh, hope you check them out. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to my session. And I would also like to thank B Sites and Antonio for providing me an opportunity to present my research. Special thanks to uh, Cheril who mentored me during my presentation preparation my tamil nadu cyber security council guys they have inspired me a lot and last but not the least kartikeyan ki who is my mentor who teaches me how to handle things and he inspires me a lot basically so that's it